Admin functions. Override synthesis and manual center control lockdown. Sounds good. Uh, synthesis and manufacturing center status is currently locked. It needs to be overridden at human inquiry. Let's go back there and back to root and then incoming messages. Oh, good lord. Don't get forced to club if you have no IRL friends. I... So I, I, I definitely locked into a friend group uh, around a period of time, and those were the people who would drug me, uh, drag me out to to clubs and, and situations like that, and and kind of nights out. Um, I think I appreciated the 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 amount of attempts I had to kind of like push out my my comfort zone, uh, but I think I've definitely had enough attempts at that now to know that uh, that's actually just it, it's just an environment I will never feel comfortable in. Okay, from Ambrose Olivia, subject updated security practices, high priority. Pursuant to last week's incident, new, new security practices are now in effect. All lab personnel must tidy their workstations before the end of shift of the day. Close and lock all drawers, safes, closets, vents, and lab doors before leaving for the bay. Junior researcher is sus. I saw them vent. A visitor must be accompanied. Furthermore, any laboratory tech accompanying a guest who has not yet received certification in either self-defense or hand-to-hand -hand combat must also be accompanied by a member of the security team. I can sing like Fre uh, Freddie Mercury as long as no other being can hear me. I have many times in my own room sang and felt like, you know what, that's good. And then as soon as I try and record it, I'm like, I can't do it anymore. It's because I, ex what? How have I... How is this now in front of people? I'm doing this alone. I, I understand that very, very deeply. All uh, confidential information must remain as such. Do not discuss the nature of your work outside or inside the lab or inside, except to warn peers of immediate danger, such as fire, chemical spill, or suspected corporate espionage. What? All laboratory techs are to isolate themselves until further notice. Any laboratory tech found fraternizing in groups of two or more, or found speaking with the same person more than once, will be reprimanded, uh, remanded rather, sorry, to Space's Choice Human Resources Reeducation and Reallocation Department. Finally, unless you are actually physically sitting in an interview pre-session, uh, session pre-approved by me, do not speak to the fucking journalists. Dr. Olivia Ambrose, Project Director. From Ambrose to Jasper, AT concerns. Jasper, I dug into the volunteer data Marion sent over. You were right. The current formulation is resulting in alarming outcomes, even by SC standards. Priyantha and I performed a handful of autopsies on the week's deceased and made a few notable observations. In one case, that of a young man in his early 20s. We noted had a degree of gray matter loss one would expect to see in a man of 70. His brain had also atrophied to a shocking extent. Again, as one might expect in a much older man. In another case, that a woman of middle age, the subject was no longer able to achieve natural sleep. After 11 consecutive days of wakefulness, she was no longer able to distinguish her violent hallucinations from reality. Yet even after she, uh, even as she spiraled, she demanded additional injections. I was sure our last tweak would reduce the incidence of violence amongst volunteer population. We might attempt to further refine the compound through partitioning, though I'm doubtful that will be efficacious. Violence aside, I'm growing increasingly concerned by the habit-forming culture and uh, nature in the compound. What do you think, Ollie? So she had a much closer relationship with Jasper than we knew of before. She doesn't call him Mr. Lowe. She doesn't call him by a full title. She's as friendly as she has been ever. Uh, this is infinitely more friendly than she was even talking about her daughter.
She never mentioned Glow before. Why? Did they have a falling out at some point? Hmm. Also the Yoli, yeah, exactly. Sorry, I, I definitely should have mentioned that, but that was part of what gave me the inclination uh, is, is that Oli is the only time I've ever seen her not use her full title and role and, uh, and workplace. From Ambrose on monthly physical high priority. Uh, from Ambrose O to the chem lab. The materials we work with are dangerous and will result in permanent injury, disfigurement, or madness when handled for extended periods. Therefore, all laboratory personnel must now report to the project physician, Dr. Priyantha LeBlanc, for monthly physicals and psychiatric evaluations. I do this out of an abundance of caution. Schedule your first appointment immediately and notify me when you do. I have access to your medical records, so I will know when you shirk. Do not make me drag you to this office myself. I just want to make IRL friends again, and with everyone not taking the current ser uh, situation seriously, it's keeping that from happening. Yeah, I, I have uh, no end of of depth of compassion for those of you who are in the United States just watching the crisis. Just like I, I cannot imagine how uh, unempowering and and isolating that feels. And maddening as well. It's it's like being inside constantly as well as being gaslit by your government is man. Was there was an uptick in, in people diagnosed with anxiety conditions in this period of time, wasn't there? There is no crisis in busting say exactly. <laughs> Thunder Show, thank you very much for the gift of tier one sub two. Dragged him, dragged him in Jerry Motson Chat. Woman Republic. Do not did the clip limit thing. Yeah, I might I might have my uh my output a touch high at the moment. I'm gonna turn it slightly down. Big uptick, yeah. That doesn't surprise me at all. Since we've been traveling together, we've visited a lot of places that set my teeth on edge. This here makes my skin crawl. Alcyon's got no shortage of creepy science labs, boss. But this place there's something real twisted about this place. I love it. Uh, Luthrell, thank you for tuning in. Sleep well. Don't know if it's the D plosive or the O. Duh, 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 duh. Oh, oh. Hmm. Thinks, I think it's the D. Is Australia still isolating the same? Actually, Sydney has been out of isolation for quite a while. Uh, the only COVID cases we've had were uh, either spread in quarantine or people who traveled in from out of state um, and are quarantining. We've been at zero community transmissions for a while, so uh, we're, we're doing pretty well. Uh, Melbourne, just Melbourne, Victoria as, as the statewide, uh, also just last yesterday had their lockdown restrictions lifted a little bit. Zero new and new deaths. But yeah, exactly. For the first time in ages. Uh, I know many Melbournians who are uh, very celebratory about it. You're more than welcome to, Mips. Uh, although, again, I, as I always say to people who are intending on messaging me, uh, I, I don't necessarily always have the ability to respond. Uh, sometimes that's a time thing. Sometimes that's a social energy thing. Sometimes that's... A brain thing. Sometimes it's all. Halcyon's got no shortage of creepy science, but this place has something twisted about it. About what I'd expect from a Space's Choice operation. I mean, literally about what I'd expect from a Space's Choice operation. Edgewater was the first city in town. That's a Space's Choice property. And they are just straight up working their uses, their their uh, their workers' death. I mean, that happens all across the galaxy here. But like, yeah, Space's Choice is screwed up. This this to makes total sense. This tracks. Some of their folks ain't entirely bad. They made Edgewater's walls strong and kept our water running. But mucking about with our... Our biology? Our bodies? It's wrong. I know it ain't saying much, being Space's choice and all, but Doc Lowe and his team was their best and brightest. 
How could this happen? Edgewater's walls were not for keeping other things out. <clears throat> I know it ain't saying much, but space is choice and all. Talk low is the best and brightest. How could this happen? Uh... They were pushed to do the impossible by people who weren't accountable. I mean, come on. That's, that is how I want to respond to it. But also you said it, this is Space's Choice best and brightest we're talking about. I think that's more like an insult to them. Like it, it's the same way when like, you know, someone's malicious and evil and people call them dumb. And it's like, they're not necessarily dumb. They know what they're doing. They're cognizant of every step of it and the outcomes. They just think the bad outcomes are good. And that, that is not to absolve that person, obviously. Instead, I suggest you call them evil. <laughs> so yeah, they were pushed to do the impossible by people who weren't accountable. Yeah, well, maybe they should have pushed back. Maybe they should have said no. I don't know if anybody's gonna take the fall for what happened here. It could be Miss Ambrose if she's not careful. The thing is, we're talking about a company that pink slips people. The pink slip is uh, a, effectively a notification that I am about to terminate an employee. And when I say terminate, I don't mean end their employment. I mean kill. So it it is weird because the world is so over the top, like all over the place, uh, that it makes it hard for people to have grounded reactions like this. Like it's weird for Felix to be looking at this and and saying the the previous thing that was uh, maybe they should have pushed back. Maybe they should have said no. He should know full well that they would just be murdered for doing it. Pavati is also just a teensy bit brainwashed. Pavati does have a uh, a charming naiveness about some things, and I think it's actually like a it's an interesting point of her character because given her life, a lot of other writers would have taken that character's backstory and decided as a result of it that they have been uh, hardened, that they are no longer naive, that they're you know that they're they're toughened up effectively, that that, that there is some progression that they have made towards being a more full individual through the trauma that they've experienced game of thrones i'm talking to you now instead this shows the strength of character of maintaining your mooring in that environment i really really love that about pavati it is What, what, what is the quote? It's like an act of, it, it, it's like a radical act to be compassionate in some such time or something. There's, there, there's, there's some, some quote that is, that is related to what you just said, upside down fairy. There is strength and softness. I agree. I totally agree. I don't think a world full of the most brusque, <laughs> like stone shithouse people is, is really gonna, really gonna be able to combat many different things. I think that's a pretty limited ability. Loving yourself as a radical act under capitalism. That is one quote that I've heard that is very related, but I think there is there is there is another similar one. Okay, that's why we're helping her as long as she should know. Let's get the journal before we know. Let's get the journal before we jump to conclusions. Cause I don't know if Olivia like somehow Olivia does seem to be trying to solve the problem, but she's also solving the problem by, you know, like killing workers. So <laughs> I never understood how people can consider mercy a weakness. Mercy is only a weakness if you intend, like if you value ruthlessness. And I think a lot of people just really do because, you know, they go low, we go high. Like your mercy against someone else's ruthlessness will lose almost every time. But that doesn't mean you should just like valorize ruthlessness. Like it, it is it, like a very strong part of kind of the global political right at the moment is valorizing kind of effectively cruelty. Austerity is literally just cruelty in government uh, policy. 
It's... Anyhow, I mean, look, I, I constantly say like, oh, we don't, we don't have to talk about this kinds of stuff. Let's go back to the game. And then it's like, we don't have to talk about, uh, we don't have to talk about the failures of capitalism. Let's get back to this game. Anyway, capitalism is failing. Uh, huh? Sorry? Huh? What? That was a, that was an audio log I just read. It's the same thing of like, you know, acting in good faith is completely fine and extremely useful and very constructive until you are interacting with someone who is interacting in bad faith. And then the whole thing is shot. It was dead eye assault rifle I was using here prior. Get him, get him, get him! That's something I've actually been thinking about a lot as well recently. Silly said, uh, capitalism is working well, dot dot dot, for those who own most of the capital. And Dragtum said, disagreed, silly. I have been... He's, Dragtum follows up with the point I was about to evaluate. Uh, turns out the lives of everyone, including the rich, get better if everyone benefits from it. Exactly. I, I've been thinking about the kinds of things that, like, if there weren't so many... I, like... Uh, corporate croft, I think, is the terminology I'm going to use here. And that is to say the amount of money that uh, flows through a corporation uh, that is siphoned off by those who make the decisions about how to pay how much and to whom. And it, it seems to me that the short-term benefits of, I don't know, you know, being able to kick people out of your apartments during a, uh, during uh, a, 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 a pandemic, it seems like those short-term benefits are significantly less than the long-term benefits of more people existing in the housing market. That's a short, very tiny kind of example of it. But obviously, like, you know, if... <laughs> if one country was capable of producing an Albert Einstein, I know all of these people talk about, like, you know, oh man, if we could have all these Albert Einsteins and all of these Nikola Teslas, if, 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 uh, you know, if if everyone was on the same kind of level, like, uh, uh, it's, if, if there were not some countries that were effectively, do I want to use the word slavery? The transfer of wealth out of certain countries, especially third world countries, typically world, third world countries, uh, to developing world countries, uh, developed countries rather, is, it is remarkable how much better the world would be off were that not happening. It's just, it, 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 it boggles the mind to think of the things that could have been accomplished, the public works that could have been created, the developments that we could have made if it wasn't for having to give Jeff Bezos some diamond infused yacht wax for his 70th yacht. Which is actually a yacht to go in one of his other yachts, which sits in a pool in his other yachts. Interesting. And it's like, Part of it now is is uh, corporate uh, philanthropy is trying to fill those holes, right? There are a, a fair few people who are trying. Obviously, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has has done. I am relatively uneducated on the subject, but I understand uh, uh, quite good works. I, I also understand that there are exploitative things in, in involved in those kinds of things, but we'll we'll talk about them in in kind of like broad overview at this point uh but obviously the bill and melinda gates and obviously like spacex is uh attempting to kind of like continue 
scientific development, at least in terms of space exploration. Um, but these kinds of things are things that they get decided to do on a whim just because they have enough money that there is no way in thousands and thousands of lifetimes they would ever be able to spend even a single fraction of it. Even, even any reasonable fraction of it. Imagine if that was handled by a democratically elected group, like a, a direct democratically elected group, that then decided to put that money and more, because we have to understand that the amount of money that they are giving back in philanthropy is not anywhere near the amount of money that they are just cheating out of other people. It is remarkable to think of how much more could be done. So yeah, sorry, Dragdom. There's, uh, there's, I, I've completely forgotten how to play the game in this period of time because I, I was just thinking about that a lot recently. It's, I, I obviously haven't verbalized those thoughts recently because usually I'm pretty, a, a, a lot better prepared to, to state how I feel clearly. But that's just means something is kicking around in my brain space a lot, you know? You know, perhaps I don't remember what language it is, but worker and slave are one word in there. Interesting. The Gates are planning on giving it all away in their lifetimes? Sure. Why is it their choice where it goes? Whether or not he chooses well. Because there are many people who won't. Right? The... the The, the idea of looking at one person who, who does something effectively uh, as, as a proof of that kind of thing being effective uh, and then ignoring all of the people who maliciously avoid, it's, it's, it's not useful, you know? Uh, Jasper's low research notes. The ones that give away are well outnumbered by the ones that hoard, yes. Uh, initial research into the primal neurochemistry has proven fruitful. I've discovered... Sorry, just below. Initial research into the primal neurochemistry has proven fruitful. I've discovered a cardiac cell receptor for adrenaline, analogous to human receptors in function, but not, if not, in physiology. It should be possible to develop a pharmaceutical drug that blocks the effect of the adrenal, uh, adrenaline hormone in primals, thus curtailing their paranoia, agitation, and violent irritability. Correction. It is possible, just unlikely, given the way OCI has put me under thumb screws, adrenatime is a dangerous drug. The danger can be mitigated by developing a adrenaline inhibitor. Take adrenatime, then take this theoretical drug to minimize its side effects. I barely have the time, energy, or resources to develop a half passable adrenatime, so this idea would remain a dream. Nonetheless, my folks, notes follow. Hope springs eternal. It's a continuation of the Great Man Theory. That the purpose of life is to create a series of great men who create all of the things that make life worth living. If I'm not mistaken. I don't understand how people can look at, like, giant complex systems and just think, this is values neutral. There is no need to provide any analysis to any possible systemic problems caused by this. It's such a gut shot reaction a lot of the time as well. Anyway. Anyway. I don't disagree, but you brought them up and said they'd never get rid of it. Not what I said. I said that they could never spend it. 
when, when I'm talking about that, um, like I specifically said, like they choose in these circumstances, I'm talking about the people like, you know, Bezos Musk. Um, they choose to do charitable effects because they could not spend it in a million lifetimes, right? And that is to say, that is to say that the charitable effects are not con uh, not contained within spend. Is this really where I want to go right now? It is. Was this area much more haunting to... Oh, okay. Low lab exterior. Cool. Maybe there's more. I think we tend to accept the status quo as long as it's uh, comfortable enough. A fish does not know it is wet and all that. That's a good point. That is a good point. Unfortunately, like, that is also very much a uh, accelerationist light kind of uh, stance. Not to say it's false. Just to say that a lot of people will look at that and then say, or surmise, that, okay, so people's lives need to get materially worse to the point that they are no longer comfortable in order to actually shake these systems. And... Ha! <sighs> That's dangerous territory. <laughs> I uh, I am much more a fan of the starving and hungry. Sorry, uh, much more a fan of the. God, this is, this is gonna sound weird until I get to the end of the sentence. I'm much more a fan of the starving and hungry uh, workers. Don't make for good revolutionary starts. Which is the same stance that many people have been proposing uh, in terms of justifying advocating to their audiences to vote for Biden. Uh, I would say that voting for Biden is harm minimization and that you should consider it. And do it. There we go. Let's kick that hornet's nest. Not a real leftist wants people to vote. I said this in my Discord at the time, but I, out of any number of reasons to despise the current situation in the uh, in the states electorally, one of them, the absolute smallest of them, I'll admit, but one of them for me has been. Oh God, really? Are you. Let me get out of here. Yeah, that hurt. One of them to me has uh, ha has been that it, it's it, it's weird to feel like an electoralist right now to be saying, please vote, please. As you might imagine from how I've been speaking, I have uh, never voted for a political party in my entire life that is one. I have. Always voted for the loser. <laughs> that is, we have a, a much more than two party system. We have repu uh, like re representative. We have like a third ish party, uh, and and we have like a lot of smaller parties that have independents in the Senate and stuff like that, and in, in government. But yeah, none of the parties I've ever voted for have won. Thankfully, we have preferential voting. Sorry. Oh, I should say this. Thankfully, we have preferential voting. So I can vote for the one that won't win, but represents my ideals. And then the one that won't win, but represents my ideals. And then another one, and then another one. And then I can put the one that will win, or could win, but isn't as bad as the next. Then I can put the one that might win, and is bad. And then all of the explicitly racist parties at the bottom. And there are a lot of those in Australia. 
Yes, we have ranked choice. I Okay, I would not be voting like that. Not having ranked choice voting forces you to vote strategically. Unfortunately, there exists a world right now where a third party candidate is not viable. It's it just it, it is not going to happen. I'm sorry. So maybe vote for the person who might win, who better represents your interests, or at least doesn't want to kill some of your friends. Lesser evil is still lesser. That that is the thing. That is to like harken back to the the accelerations, uh, the accelerationists' argument would be to say that, like, sure, you shouldn't have to settle for any evil or whatever, blah blah blah. But also, the the lesser evil prolongs the evil. Ah, oh, but uh, so now it's a good idea. It's still, I, I've fielded that argument a couple times in real life from people who I, I truly believe to have their hearts in the right place, but I have very little patience for it. I think to a couple of those people, it's more a theoretical fun thing that they get to debate than a reality to some, uh, to some people's lives. Ah, get away, get away, get away. Ah, get away, get away. Kick him. Kick him. Slam him! Right I've always felt accelerationism is a privileged luxury. I would definitely agree. Get him! Man, I really need to find a better weapon with these. Oh, this is bad. Maybe I just like... What's this weapon level? 34! It's so good! Maybe I just need to repair my weapon. They can shoot, can't they? Oh, I love preferential voting. In Canada, we have like four main parties and I have to, I, I have had to vote strategically in the past because only two of them actually have the ability to win in 98% of the elections. I can't remember the time a different, uh, the last time a different one won. Stephen Harper's election, Stephen Harper's first election, did that not occur because three different left ish leaning parties i believe two of them were actually relatively leftist but they they split the vote against him and he won with what like 25 percent i think i might have a number or two wrong there but 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 i tend to recall that from the time Fellow Canadian here, Harper won with a little higher than 25%, but you have the general just right. Okay, yeah. Nice one. But yeah, that 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 is a exact perfect example of why strategic voting is necessary in circumstances that do not have first yeah. <clears throat> do not have preferential yeah. voting, rather, sorry, ranked preferential voting. Because that was a government that represented a minority, not just a, like a statistical minority of the people, but also a minority of the people's interests. That's minority rule. <laughs> society cigarettes as well as spectrum. Okay, so someone was trying to live the high life in here. Compound X is a unique challenge to work with. It's temperamental. It must be refined under tightly controlled circumstances at tremendously low temperatures. Do you compound it with anything else? Tell me more about your refining process. Our audience is conversant in the sciences, very detail oriented. So don't be afraid to get technical. Last time I met you, you spoke like a groundbreaker builder sprat. Why the sudden airs and such specific questions? Does 
Does your minder know what you're up to? Mm -hmm. Does he suspect you're a spy? I, pardon me. Yes. Yeah, yeah I, I knew that was going to come. From about halfway in there. Here in the UK, we rejected the change to preferential voting. I have no idea why. I would argue that people were possibly, uh, I don't know, convinced to vote against their own interests. It's not like you all have the Murdoch press over there at all, right? That's a uniquely Australian problem, surely. It's definitely not like he himself individually as a person that exists has contributed heavily to that in all. <laughs> in Australia, the UK, as well as uh, the, 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 the US. Not, certainly not, right? That'd be outsized impact for one moron to have. You know what? I just, I just did the thing that I said that you shouldn't do earlier. He's not dumb. He is actively malicious. The things he thinks good are bad. Whose son just caught COVID. I, again, that's a circumstance where, you know what? Maybe that person did nothing to contribute towards themselves getting COVID. And I don't know much about his son. I know of his son's involvements in the, the lawsuits back when the son was uh, having all of the, the hacking scandals uh, litigated in the, in the UK. But I wouldn't feel good taking Schadenfreude in that. that. Just bring it full circle back to the previous example. Like, hmm. Does that exist eternal? Does that exist eternal? Because I definitely made a couple of Roger Ailes jokes the day after he died. No, because that's less schadenfreude and... Like, the, the that, that's less schadenfreude and more refusing to respect the dead just on account of being dead. I don't know. There's there's interrelated issues in there. Also, while chat while chat has been lovely here, and I understand there are some of you who are probably biting pretty hard on your tongue as I talk about uh, political and economic things, <laughs> and uh, to those of you who are currently doing that, I appreciate it. Uh, but to those of you on YouTube who are going to say, "Well, oh, Trump's not a fascist," actually, I'd like to sit down and have a three-hour conversation with you and explain to you why he's not a fascist. You know what? Save your comment. <laughs> Save your breath. Oh, Raps isn't open to debate on his ideas. I'm actually just not open to listening to you. <laughs> actually, like, cause I'm not open to listening to you because that's a conversation of like, actually, eating shit is good for your systems and you should be doing it every day. It's, it's a really healthy thing to do. What? Yeah, just, just, just shovel shit down your mouth all day, every day, all day long. But that's not good at all. Now you're not open-minded, are you at all? Oh, you just have a little bit of shit. Just, just elect a couple fascists. <laughs> that happens a couple times on the uh, Outer Worlds VODs. <laughs> it, it happens a lot on the stream content where people suddenly find out I'm a lot more of a staunch leftist than, than necessarily they might have expected. Or Disco Elysium. Oh god, yeah, Disco Elysium. There were actually, I, you know what? No, I will say, on Disco Elysium, there were two different people at two different segments who wanted to have a, three, three different people at different segments who wanted to have a debate about uh, some esoteric point of of, uh, of of theoretical politics in uh, in those games. And I had three very fruitful discussions. 
I also had a lot of really garbage comments that just like on the first couple episodes that ended up just getting filtered out by my previous uh, my setup filters. It's just weird. Gotta call it Mazovi. Oh, sorry, you're right. You're right. I'm. I'm just a Mazovian socioeconomist. It's my background too. Oh my god. <laughs> I want. I want. I want a. I want a painting of that to put up on the wall behind this. I need to find someone who can do that. Or someone that's already selling them. Okay. I wish I disagreed with you on more things. You learned so much from that. I agree, certainly. It, like every idea that I currently hold, I disagree with strongly at some point, right? God forbid anyone, like God forbid that they're ever God forbid the circumstance that like early teenage rhapsody had recorded anything because I I was I was garbage I was awful I as a young teenager got swept up in uh, in men's rights yeah exactly But why do women get the right to abortion and men don't have a legal right to abortion? This is the biggest issue facing the genders, of which there are certainly only two. That's my impression of me at that time. Yeah. I am so glad that YouTube was not like as advanced of an alt-right factory as it became later at that period of time. But there, but for the grace of God, go I, right? Because it, oh, it could have been different. I know a couple people who were shocked out of like having really, really shitty politics by coming out as queer and engaging with their community and understanding how those things interact, how those systems interact with their community. DW, I was the same when I was younger, I was iffy about same sex marriage, I was an idiot. This, this is something that, that advice, you and I have had a, a small conversation about this before, but it is something that is endly, endlessly interesting to me because we all know that we started somewhere and we came to somewhere else. So people need, th there needs to be a, uh, a, a what, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's not rec reconciliation, it's not retribution, it's, I, I think I'm looking for forgiveness, but forgiveness paired with action? Reclamation? I don't know. There's, there's a word I'm looking for that I can't find in my brain. 404, word not currently found. But everyone changes, possibly. Every, everyone definitely changes, right? Uh, invariably true. And we do need to especially now that people's you know, positions are recorded for all history and all time perfectly online, there does need to be some process for allowing people to grow. Restitution, restorative justice. I think, I think those are parallel to the word I was looking for, but certainly in the same ballpark. You might notice that while I am invoking this discussion, I am not using the terminology cancel culture, and I'm not using that because when I say, or when anyone says cancel culture, every single person has a different thing in their head. Like, look, when I say tree, you think of a tree, right? You and I aren't seeing the same tree in our heads, but we both know basically what a tree is. 
when you talk about things that are abstract as cancel culture, uh, everyone has a completely different idea of what they're talking about and argue ferociously as though everyone's talking about the same thing. And it is fruitless. It is utterly, utterly fruitless. When we talk about cancel culture, in my head, what I'm seeing is effectively a civilian justice agency trying to hold to account those who are otherwise not held to account. Effectively uh, trying to form a kind of power of the people kind of movement in terms of uh, how you approach people with especially certainly uh, detrimental social positions, including to the communities you might be a part of. However, to another person, they're like, that's that's when they have to stop making Aunt Jemima and I hate that. Well, actually, okay, that's that's an example that I would still say is, <laughs> is a change that needed to be made, but okay. <laughs> You know, I, I'm constantly talking here and babbling, but I think I got my point across a couple words ago. But I'm, I'm very interested as, as the, the age of those who grew up with the internet develops and matures, how that ends up interacting. And I hope that there is something in mind for a carrot, not a stick. Can anyone think of like any major stars who are open about previously being very prejudiced? I know that Liam Neeson said that so Liam Neeson has this story that he told in an interview once. Uh, a friend of his was uh, sexually assaulted by uh, by a person of, I can't remember the ethnicity, and also it's not important. But in response to that, he went out on the town looking for someone of that ethnicity to kill. Did he say kill? I think he said kill, but he might have been like being hyperbolic. He specifically wanted to go out and at least have a physical confrontation with someone of the ethnicity. That's such a wild story, given especially the kind of like current world's feeling about him being kind of like a dad. It's just strange, you know? Not fast travel at this time? What? Oh, because I was in the air. And then obviously, you know, Mark, Marky Mark, Mr. Wahlberg, assaulting someone to the point of putting out their eye. In a hate crime. Those are the only two examples I can think of though. Twice? He got both eyes? <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's, that's a pretty flippant joke for a very serious situation. Is this real great Chad talk about a uh, white supremacist seeking forgiveness? Is, the, is that healing from hate? Is that, uh, I, I, I may have seen it if it's the one that you're talking about. Uh, the, the guy who was in neo-Nazi uh, groups as a kid and now wrote a book about healing from hate. 